Hey guys, Dr. Paul here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a cross polarizer at home. A cross polarizer, we use it for shade taking photographs. When you take a photograph for your laboratory for a shade match, there's a reflection in the image. A cross polarizer will remove that reflection so you can see the shade and also the inner structure of the tooth for a better shade match. Now, you can buy these from anywhere from about $300 up to $1,000 or you can do what I did and spend about $30 or $40 and make one at home. I'll show you how to make one for a twin flash and a ring flash, as well as some variations so you can choose which one's best for you. I will start off by saying the way that I show you how to make these polarizers is not the only way to do it. I'm sure there's other variations that might be just as good, if not better. It's just one way that I found worked for me. I think that you'll like it too. So here's everything that you need. Now for the main housing of the polarizer, you can use a thin piece of cardboard. It's a bit cheaper or you can use something more sturdy, like a foam board that you can get from a supplies shop. Now I printed off some images of the flashes. I've got these online, they're life-size pieces. You'll see how I use those. Then I've got another bit of cardboard down for the table so I don't cut through because I've got a scalpel. Then we've got a ruler. We've also got a permanent marker, sticky tape, scissors. We've got some magnets. You'll see how we use those, blue tack, and then we've got some super glue as well. Then the flashes, of course. Uh, then we also have the polarized sheet. So that sheet, it has to be a piece that's really big, um, so you've got enough. And you also have to make sure that it is linear. Hey, super quick, if you're getting something out of the video, please like, share, or subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. All right, back to the video. So we'll start off by cutting with a scalpel uh, on the pieces of paper that we printed off the flashes with. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna then transfer, once we've got these holes, we're gonna transfer this to our foam board. Now I'm cutting it to the actual size that I want my actual foam piece to be. Uh, and you'll see how that makes a difference here. And you wanna make sure that you've got a bit of excess around the outside. So now I'm lining it up on the foam board, sticky taping it. I've got the top marking out exactly where I want that to finish. And then with a permanent marker, I'm marking out those holes. And so once I've transferred this onto the foam board, I'll then take my scalpel and cut out those holes. And these holes are gonna be where the pieces for the polarized sheet are going to actually go. So then I'm cutting it around the outside and it leaves me with a piece of about this shape. Now I'm actually transferring that shape to a piece of cardboard that's gonna form the front of the actual polarizer. So using the exact same outline as before, and then again, using my scalpel to make those incisions. And this is going to actually form the front of the polarizer. So the polarized sheets will go in between. It'll make sense when you see it. Now, it, again, it is important to actually have some excess around the outside, and that's just so you've actually got something to sticky tape or to glue the polarized sheet onto. You need some excess. Now, I line them up just to make sure, and they're fitting really well together. Okay, so now we're up to the part where we cut out from the polarized sheet. Now, it's really important that the piece that goes here and here, they're exactly parallel to each other. But the piece here in the middle, it has to be at exactly 90 degrees to these pieces. If it's not 90 degrees and exactly 90 degrees, you won't get the effect that you need. So when you do this, but you have to actually draw on the top of the sheet, and I'll show you what I mean by that. This piece here, you'll notice it has two sides to it that can peel off. One, this side's not sticky. This other side, if I peel it off, it is sticky. So the side that is sticky underneath, you wanna keep that in place. But this side that's not sticky, it's the one that gets the air bubbles. You're gonna peel that off. So you can draw on this fine. Now we're going to mark in off of this where our spots are. Now I'm gonna actually make them slightly bigger because I prefer, again, to have more than not enough. Now when I do this piece, you can do it as a circle, but what I find easier is to actually do it as a square piece. When you do it as a square piece, you can make sure as well that it is horizontal. So I'll go up to the middle and mark my line here as my 90 degree line. That reminds me to get it vertical when it comes to put it onto the phone. Now we'll cut these pieces out, like I said, make them a little bit bigger. Now we'll try these in for size. So that fits over really nicely. That fits over and there's plenty of space and this fits over. But remember, this is gonna have to be vertical. So this line is going to be parallel with these guys. But check if it is right, you overlap them. If you notice that it's quite clear when you look through them, compared to being a little bit darker, then you know that it's not right. So they have to be like this. Now the other way that you can verify it is by using some polarized sunglasses and it's similar to how when you look through your phone 
there's a certain angle on the phone where it goes dark and then the other angle it goes light. So when you're actually looking at the cross polarized sheets, when you have the glasses on, you'll notice that when it's vertical, you'll be able to see through it. When the other one is perfectly horizontal, it goes dark. And then if you turn your head or you turn the piece, it should be the opposite. That way you know they're exactly in the correct orientation. Now get your sticky tape ready and you'll peel off that plastic. Now before I put this piece over the top, I'd probably at this stage then test it with the camera. So we'd actually test it just holding it up, take a photo of some teeth and check to make sure. And then you can sticky tape these pieces together. Now if you wanted to look a little bit fancy, you can use glue, but I find that sticky tape's fine. So here we have it. So here are the end products. We've got one that's a bit firmer, which has the foam. This one, it's made out of the thicker cardboard, but does flop around quite a little bit. Will it make a difference? I don't actually think so, but the next thing is for us to mount them. And I'm gonna show you two ways of doing it. And one might be easier than the other, depending on which one you decide to use. So the first way of mounting is just with some blue tack. So put some blue tack there, put some blue tack there. Don't squash it all the way down because you'll need a little bit of thickness when you come to actually put this into place. Then you'll position it and then squeeze together and It'll stay in place really easily. You only need it for the one shot and then you'll be taking it off. So that works quite well. Works well for this one too. The downside, it's not gonna clip on and clip off like the other way will with the magnet, but this is a nice budget way of doing it, a little bit more simple. So the other way that we're gonna do it is with these magnets. Now the magnets that I'm using, you will notice that when you look from this direction, there is a small gap between the actual housing and the polarizer. So you need to make sure that these magnets are thick enough that they are actually going to fill in that gap. And these guys definitely will. Now, first thing is that we're gonna position this into place and then we'll mark out the location of where the magnet's going to go. So I'm just marking here the outline and I want the magnet right in the middle. So here, and here, which will correspond to here and here. It's not the most accurate way of doing it. I'm sure there are more accurate ways, but for what I need, this will be fine. So we're gonna get some glue. Now don't try and test to see if this works until the glue has fully set. So wait about an hour, because otherwise, you'll find that the magnets are so strong that the magnets will just pull off the actual polarizer or off of here and obviously we don't want that. Now when you put it onto here, don't put it in the same orientation, you have to flip it because if you put it in the same orientation, they repel each other. So you have to go opposite orientation. So we need to flip it upside down. So glue here. Might put a little bit more because this has grooves. Okay, so now that we've waited some time, we're just gonna test how this goes. So if you're about to take the photo, you would bring it over and then clip it into place. That works really well. We're good to go. And then simply just take it off. On, off, awesome. So this is definitely the way that I'm gonna do it. Don't really have a choice now that I've super glued those in place, um, but that's a super easy way to do it. So for the ring flash, what I'm gonna do is actually make the outside border wider. And the reason for that is because if you don't do that and you have these holes being all the way to the edge, nothing for the polarized sheet to actually sit and glue on top of. So you need to have an edge here and an edge here that you can glue it onto. Uh, it'll make more sense when we get to that part. Now for the lens section, if we actually look at the lens, you'll see that the black area in the middle is nowhere near the size of the lens. So what that means is that you only need to cut out the area here where the lens is. If that hole is too big, again, there's gonna be nowhere 
for the polarized sheet to actually glue on top of. So leave some space, only take out the bit that you need. And there we are. So I'm just sticky taping this in place on top of our cardboard. And again, you can use a cardboard piece or you can use the foam like I've got here if you want it to be a bit thicker. So we're gonna trace around the outside. And I'm leaving more here on purpose, again, just to make it easier to actually glue on the polarized sheet. So it doesn't get in my way, I'm gonna do this bit with some pen. And then I'll take off the piece of paper. Now it's time for us to cut out the polarized lens sheet. So I'm gonna trace these areas here. And then also we're gonna mark the vertical line here to make sure to remember to spin that at 90 degrees. And same as before, doing these a little bit larger to allow you to stick it on to the foam is recommended. So let's try that in. Looks good. This time I'm actually going to use super glue just to show you the difference with using super glue versus sticky tape. Another way that you can do this instead of that line is that you can cut one of the sides straight and if you cut it straight you can keep that horizontal so you're not relying on taking this piece of plastic off and then having no reference. So next thing is that you'll want the corresponding cardboard piece to go on the outside. So we'll sticky tape this into place. In hindsight, I probably should have done this stage before I'd actually glued these in, because now that they're glued in, it'll be a little bit trickier, so I'll have to use this piece. So now we need a way to secure this to the actual flash, but a way that is detachable because you're not gonna obviously be using it every single time. Because these bits aren't flat, or well, they're not perfectly flat like the other one, it's a little bit easier in this case to use blue tack. So with blue tack, a little bit of time to set up, but then to position it, very easy. It'll stay in place, take the photo, then when you're done, take it off. I'm sure there are other ways, but this is a very simple, easy way of doing it. So now that we've made these, let's test them out and see how they work. Now one thing worth mentioning is that when you have the polarizer on, the flash has to now pass through the polarizer, which means that the flash power needs to be increased when you actually take the image. Either that, or increase your ISO, or decrease your f-stop to adjust for having the polarizer in place. So this is the ring flash without using a polarizer, and it results in this image. And then when we use the ring flash with the polarizer, this is the image that we get. Now we're gonna be using the twin flash without the polarizer, result in this image. And then as a comparison, this is when we're using the twin flash with the polarizer. So there you have it guys, there's a few different ways that you can make some polarizers. I hope that helps you out taking some shade photos for your laboratory. You'll get a better result for you, a better result for the lab, everyone's happy. So if you got something out of the video, please like, share, subscribe, those things help me out a lot. If you've got any questions, put them in the comment section, or if you've got ways to do it better, put them in the comment section as well. 
Anyway, guys, have a great day and keep on smiling.